Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefine Horizons, and this is a video uh, that I'm putting together uh, to just show you how uh, we sometimes need to deal with um, land use regulators. Uh, so we, we were hired by a client. He had another surveyor prepare a lot line adjustment, and the lot line adjustment application was denied. And so the, the surveyor reached out to us to get some help with the land planning side of it. And uh, we read the, the county's denial letter, and it wasn't super clear uh, exactly why the lot line adjustment was being denied. Um, and then we checked some of the information that, that the county claimed was in their uh, zoning uh, ordinances. Uh, that was the reason for the denial, and, and um, uh, wasn't clear to us that, that, that the county was relying on um, the ordinances as, as they were actually written. And so what, what we initially did is we prepared a letter, prepared a, an email that went over to the planner, the land use regulator, land planner at the county, and uh, we just asked some follow-up questions, um, and we're trying to clarify what the county rules are. Because uh, it may be that our client can't, can't do this lot line adjustment, but that isn't clear to us from the county regulations. And sometimes people at the planning department, uh, they just shoot from the hip. Uh, or they don't understand their own ordinances sometimes. And so uh, we're really trying to, to, to get the county to clarify what the rules are. Um, and if my client can't do this according to the to the actual rules, then I will tell my client that. Uh, but um, I'm not going to tell my client that until the county can adequately demonstrate to me that that's what the rules actually say. So what I need to do in this email is I need to draft a response to the planner. Um, so when we asked a couple very specific questions... Um, that the planner did not answer in their last email and so I need to restate those questions and ask for an answer again and then there's a couple follow-up questions that we have now based on some of the of the feedback that we've gotten so just so so you guys understand what the issue is uh, so the client's trying to do a lot line adjustment to move a boundary line to a fence um, it's not a it's not a huge move um, it's several feet uh, but these are big parcels so one's almost 200 acres and the other is is over 10 acres so he's just trying to move a, a boundary line to a fence. Now, the two parcels have different zoning. Uh, they're both ag-type zonings, uh, but one is is kind of what they call ag transition, and the other is uh, what they call resource production in the county code. And uh, because they have a different zoning, uh, the county's saying that we have to uh, do a general plan amendment and a rezone and uh, uh, go through CEQA, and um, all that may be true, but we can't see where that's clearly defined in the code. And uh, we also are trying to assess the costs of that process for a client. And of course, the client doesn't, the, the county doesn't have uh, very much information on the, the website, the county website about w what it takes to get through a rezone. They don't, they don't have the application online. And um, so this is, this thing's kind of a mess. So uh, what I want to do is just show you guys how we're going to prepare this uh, email to the county. So the county the county planner's name is Catherine. That's the local land use regulator. So, you know, you always want to be very polite and professional, so I'm going to say thank you for your latest response on the proposed lot line adjustment. Um, and then I'm going to say for the parcel identified as XXXX and I'm not going to put the address in on the video because um, I don't want to put this county on blast or this planner on blast okay so we're going to say just thank her for the last response I say um, we still would uh, we don't believe your last email answered the following two questions. So I'm going to tell her, you didn't answer my two questions the last time, and then I'm going to restate the questions. So I'm just going to say, does the county have an ordinance that defines the restrictions or conditions on a lot line adjustment between two parcels of different zoning? And does the county, uh, the second question is, uh, does the county have... <clears throat> Does the county have an ordinance that prohibits the lot line adjustment between a conforming and non-conforming parcel? So she didn't answer either one of those questions in my last 
email. I'm going to say, in addition, we have the following. Uh, we have the following questions we'd like to have answered. Okay, so we've got some new questions now based on their latest latest response. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and and uh, continue the numbering here. So uh, what I want to know is um, is the resource production zone in the county related to the inclusion or exclusion of the parcel I'm going to say subject parcel from a Williamson Act contract. So the Williamson Act is something we have in California that allows you to reduce your ta tax bill if you keep your land in ag production. So I'm going to just say, in other words, if a Williamson Act contract is removed, does the land, does the subject parcel remain in the resource production zone or does the zoning change without a Williamson Act? If the Williamson Act, if, if inclusion in the Williamson Act is removed, and I'm going to say I assume the zone the zoning of the subject parcel will stay the same. And I'm going to just put in brackets. I'm trying to separate the Williamson Act issue from the actual land planning issues that may that are behind the denial of the lot line adjustment. The answer to this question will help help me with that. Okay, so I want to know because we can go through a separate process with the ag commissioner to take the land out of the Williamson Act contract. That shouldn't change the zoning, but I wanted to clarify that because I feel like the county is is confusing those two issues. So we have a, we have an ag preservation issue that's related to the Williamson Act contract that has to get handled with the ag commissioner. And then separately, we may have a zoning issue that needs to get handled by the planning department. And I don't want those two issues getting confused. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, my next question is, um, is the only way, <clears throat> the only authorized, op the, uh, I'm going to say the only option per county code to change a zone zone boundary a uh, a re, a general plan amendment and rezone is there no other process to move a zoning boundary Please remember, we are talking about I'm going to say to change the zone boundary between two parcels. Please remember my uh, let's see, see. I'm going to say this question deals with uh, not with the rezone of an entire parcel, but simply the adjustment of the zone boundary between parcels. Okay.
and then I want to say um, is the um, I'm going to say can you tell me where in the county code the process for adjustment between zone boundaries or general plan designation boundaries is defined. So again, I want to take her back to the code, right? Like I don't want her opinion. I want the law. I want the county code, the county ordinance. Okay. Um, and then there was one other issue on, uh, it wasn't clear from us whether the zoning, uh, what the minimum zoning was for our particular parcel. So I'm going to say, um, but before I get to that, I want, uh, so we got one more kind of general question, which is, uh, if we are moving the zone boundary, general plan designation boundary, as part of the lot line adjustment and a rezone is needed per county code what is being uh, I'm gonna say what land is being rezoned are we rezoning the portion are we rezoning the transfer parcel being moved from one lot to the other lot? From the I'm going to say from the first lot to the second lot. First parcel to the second parcel as part of the lot line adjustment. Is this, I'm going to say, can you provide the county code section that defines this requirement? Okay. So then I'm going to say we have this specific question related to our subject parcel. Okay, and then that question is going to be, um, what is the minimum area for this parcel? The county zoning code lists either 10 acres or 20 acres, but it isn't clear how this is determined. So I've got kind of five general questions here that could apply to any parcels in the county that were involved in a lot line adjustment, right? I don't, I don't want to hear stuff from the planner about Williamson Act contract or ag preservation or parcels on my street. I just, in general, I want to know, does the county have an ordinance that does this? Does it have an ordinance that does that? Does it have ordinances that do these? Like, I just, I want answers to these questions in general, not as they apply to a specific parcel. Because I don't, I don't want the planner dredging up um, issues that apply to the specific parcel and using those as an excuse to deny the lot line adjustment. I want to know what are the rules are across the board. Some of these rules should be applied across the board to every parcel in the county, right? I want to make sure that the rules are being applied fairly. Okay, so uh, then I need to put a note in here that makes that clear. We understand that uh, agricultural preservation is an important goal the county is trying to achieve okay so I have to put that in there because she got preachy with me in the last email and was telling me ag preservation is really important and that's why we're not going to let you do this yada yada like I, I don't care right I know I understand ag preservation is important I want to know what the rules are right you don't get to tell this guy he can't do a lot line adjustment just because you don't like him 
right? Um, however, so I'm going to say uh, we understand that's important. However, I need to be able to explain to my client with citations to the applicable county code sections why he can't move his parcel boundary to the existing fence. If county code is unclear and the, uh, the information being provided is based on the discretion or interpretation of county code by the planning staff, please indicate that. In those instances, I may recommend my client consult with a land attorney. So what I'm telling her there is, uh, if you guys at the planning department are shooting from the hip, you know, if it's not clear in the county code and you're just giving me your opinion, I want to know that because uh, your opinion may not be enough to deny my client's lot line adjustment. And I may tell him to get lawyered up. Okay. So, because, uh, you know, land, land use regulators in California are typically unelected bureaucrats, right, that are not accountable um, to the public. As a, <laughs> and to a large extent, they are not accountable. They are unelected uh, they are unelected government uh, officials, and so um, you know they need to stick to the rules. Um, and if if it's not clear now, it's like this may not be the planner's fault. It may be that it's not clear that there isn't a good answer to the questions I'm asking. That the county code may be unclear. A lot of times, zoning code and land use regulation is unclear, right? And this is a little bit of a tricky case here because I'm trying to move a line between two parcels of different zoning, which which isn't common. Uh, but if the answers aren't clear, she needs to just tell me it's not clear in the code or we're not sure we need to check with our county county council, county lawyer, right? She needs to tell me that. Don't you know I don't want her to fake it. I don't want her to pretend that it's clear if it's not. And we read the code. I already believe that that these issues aren't clear in the code. I, I don't think the county code is specific about these particular questions and I, I have the sneaking suspicion that the planning department is shooting from the hip. Um, so I'm trying to nail them down on that. If I had read the code and it was clear, I would have already gone back and told my client, uh, you can't do your lot line adjustment, and here's why. Here's what it says in the county code. <clears throat> I uh, So I'm going to say, I deeply appreciate your help with this. We understand uh, the land use regulations aren't always black and white and that we may be dealing with some gray area here then I'm just say after I receive your answers to the six questions in this email I just say to the questions in this email I may request a meeting with the uh, uh, county planning department, myself, and the landowner, my client. Thank you again. Okay, so very polite, right? But um, if she's been around very long, uh, she's gonna know that I'm serious and uh, that we're not fooling around and that we're not just gonna take their word for it, right? I want. Um, I want references to some county code sections. Okay, so uh, let me just read this email in its entirety here at the end. It says, Catherine, thank you for your latest response on the proposed lot line adjustment for the parcel identified as X. We don't believe your last email answered the following two questions. And, and I always like to put that in two in brackets, parentheses. Does the county have an ordinance that defines the restrictions or conditions on a lot line adjustment between two parcels of different zoning? Does the county have an ordinance that prohibits a lot line adjustment between a conforming and non-conforming parcel if the number of non-conforming parcels is not increased by the lot line adjustment? 
In addition, we have the following general questions we'd like to have answered. Is a resource production zone in the county related to the inclusion or exclusion of the subject parcel from a Williamson Act contract? In other words, if a Williamson Act contract is removed, does the subject parcel remain in the resource production zone or does the zoning change if inclusion in the Williamson Act? Or I should just say, does the, um, does the zoning change? So I got a little bit of a run on sentence there, repeating myself. I assume the zoning on the subject parcel will stay the same. I'm trying to separate the Williamson Act issue from the actual land planning issues that are behind the denial of the lot line adjustment. The answer to this question will help me with that. Question four is the only option per county code to change a zone boundary between two parcels, a general plan amendment, and I'm going to just put and or rezone. Because if they're in the same general plan designation, you may not need a general plan amendment. Is there no other process to move a zone, move a zone boundary? This question deals not with a rezone of an entire parcel, but simply the adjustment of the zone boundary between parcels. Can you tell me where in the county code the process for adjustment between zone boundaries or general plan designation boundaries is defined? If we are moving the zone boundary, general plan designation boundary is part of the lot line adjustment and a rezone is needed per county code, what land is being rezoned? They haven't told me that. What do I have to rezone? Are we rezoning the transfer parcel move from the first parcel to the second parcel as part of the lot line adjustment? Can you provide the county code sections that defines this requirement? That defines what land needs to be rezoned. A zone boundary is changed. Okay, then I'm going to say, um, would you be able to provide a copy of the rezoning application because I can't find it on their website. And then we have this, this uh, I'm gonna just say this one specific question related to our subject parcel. What is the minimum area for this parcel? County zoning code lists either 10 acres or 20 acres, but it isn't clear how this is determined. We understand that agricultural preservation is an important goal the county is trying to achieve. However, I need to be able to explain to my client without a citation to the applicable county code sections or state law why he can't move his parcel boundary to the existing fence. If county code is unclear and the information being provided is based on the discretion or interpretation of county code by the planning staff, please indicate that. In those instances where discretion or interpretation is involved, interpretation is involved I may recommend that my client uh, my client consult with a land attorney I deeply appreciate your help with this we understand land use regulations aren't always black and white and that we may be dealing with some gray area in this case after I receive your answers to the questions in this email I may request a meeting with the county planning department myself and the landowner my client thank you again okay and I am going to copy my client on there <clears throat> and then uh, I'm going to say uh, follow up on lot line adjustment denial four, and then I'll plug in the parcel address there. Um, so that's a little longer than my typical video, but hopefully this guy, hopefully this video will help you guys understand. You know, you can't always take the the local land use regulator's opinion at face value, especially when there's a lot of money on the line. You know, uh, in this case, if my client has to do a rezone and a general plan amendment and go through some CEQA stuff. He could be looking at somewhere between $30,000 and $50,000 just to move a line to a fence. I think that's a little ridiculous. Um, I have the feeling his county board of supervisor would probably agree with me. Um, and, and look, if that's what the rules are, then that's fine. And I will tell my, I have no problem telling my client that. Uh, but to, to date, all I've gotten from uh, the county is either um, ambiguous um, explanations or opinion. And I, I haven't gotten uh, clear citations to county code. So that's what they need to give me. Um, and part of the reason I need that, I'm not trying to be difficult. Part of the reason I need that is I need to be able to go back to my, I need to be able to go back to my client with a technical memo or a report that explains why I can't help him, why he can't do the lot line adjustment, and I need to be able to cite the code. That's what I would want if I was the client. So there you go. There's the video. And uh, I'll probably do some more of these videos where we're having some interactions with the local land use regulator. It's, it's an important thing uh, for uh, land surveyors to learn how to do. So... Catch you guys on the next video. Hey guys, I just wanted to 
show you, I, I added a, a note here to my email to the to the planner and uh, after I stopped recording. Uh, but I think it's important, so I wanted to show you guys a note. Um, it says, please note in my questions above, I'm not asking how the rules apply to my client's specific situation. I'm asking broadly about the rules that would apply to any two parcels involved in a pro proposed lot line adjustment within the county. I frame the questions that way so I can thoroughly understand the county rules. This also helps me ensure the county rules are being applied fairly and consistently. So uh, what I'm telling her here is, is for these six questions, I don't want to hear explanations that relate to my specific parcel, my client's parcel. I want to know just in general, what are the county rules, right? That helps me make sure that the county is applying the rules consistently. Um, you don't get to go in there and get your lot line adjustment approved with two parcels in different zones just because you're somebody's cousin, right? And in this particular county, uh, this is a rural county um, with some good old boy network effects, and it wouldn't surprise me if that kind of malarkey happened. So I want to know, I want the planner to go on the record, you know, in general, in any type of a lot line adjustment that involves a, a parcels in different zones, what are the rules? That's what I want to know. And then down below that, I say, all right, and then I have this specific question about my client's parcel. So uh, hopefully this will help me uh, nail down the county a little bit. And I just wanted to show you guys that, that I had added this uh, this note here.